Quentin Tarantino is one of the best modern day storytellers when it comes to filmmaking. The way he's able to immerse you in his world is something that I don't really get to experience very often. And it's no secret that Quentin knows what he's doing when it comes to writing his stories. But what you might not have noticed is how he's able to tell his story through the wardrobe of his characters. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a great example of that. In this video, I'm going to take you through the impeccable outfits of the iconic director's ninth film and show you how he and the costume designer were able to tell his story through the clothing. If you haven't seen it yet, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is set in 1969 and is a peek into the lives of TV actor Rick Dalton, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and his friend and stuntman Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt. We follow the two as Rick begins to realize that the days of him being an A-list TV celebrity is in the rearview mirror right as he attempts to play another one-off role on yet another western show. All this is happening while Cliff is fixing up Rick's house which is conveniently right next to the house of Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate played by Margot Robbie. So the costume designer for this movie was Ariane Phillips who's worked on films such as Kingsman, Tank Girl, The Crow, and of course, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now let's get into the costume design. Like I said before, there was a story being told about the characters through the clothing that they're wearing, and you see it right away when we first meet Rick Dalton off set. The first time we see Rick Dalton not on set is when he's going to see Marvin Schwartz about possible roles for his career. It's here where Rick figures out he's a has-been, no longer the A-lister he once was, and you can see that through his clothes. So during the late 60s, there was a transition of how people dressed. Menswear was becoming a lot more casual, and denim was worn a lot at this time. Rick is still adopting the more formal and tidy look that you saw during the early 60s with his light brown mock neck sweater underneath his brown leather waistcoat, which actually was a vintage coat from the 60s. To be honest, I think the coat is gorgeous and reminds me of the cut of an Eisenhower jacket with its cropped and tailored look and that notched collar but unfortunately at this time it was not so fashion forward. On bottom he's wearing a pair of Wrangler straight leg trousers that were also vintage and they're in this like light fern colorway. And for his feet Rick is seen in almost the entire movie in these dark brown cowboy boots that has this bug and wrinkle medallion stitching around the toe. If you don't know what that means, uh, bug and wrinkle just describes the type of stitching detail on the front of the toe. So Quentin and Ariane had the idea that Rick never really bothered to buy any clothes. So he just wears whatever clothes he gets from sets, which is why he's always wearing those cowboy boots. He likely got them off of Bounty Law or another show that's just like that. And they wanted Rick to wear the cowboy boots on an offset to show that Rick is trying to prove something to the viewer. Cowboys are seen as tough and badass and Rick is obviously insecure in some ways uh, where he is at it in his career. So what does he do to fix that? He's wearing cowboy boots. For jewelry, Rick is seen throughout the film with a medallion necklace that was modeled after the bad boy era of TV, like Steve McQueen. One side is monogrammed with the letter R, while the other side has a Tudor rose pattern. Unfortunately, we never really get a close-up look of the medallion. And now his belt buckle has another monogram with the letter R, but they made sure to have the medallion flipped to the pattern when he wore the belt. And lastly, he has a gold pinky ring that is of a lion on his right hand. So Cliff Booth is Rick's stuntman and a cool one at that. He's extremely talented, hardworking, and pretty keen with fashion, and throughout the movie this is shown. He understands where fashion is going, which is why he's dressed the way he is. In the late 60s, people were dressing a lot more casual, and Cliff was definitely at the forefront of the duo. He's seen here in double denim wearing a vintage Wrangler Icons 124 MJ Western jacket with a black t-shirt underneath and some vintage Levi's possibly the five, the original 501s, but it's not a definite. I love the 124 MJ jacket with that zipper front. I think it looks gorgeous and it's another great jacket within this film. Now denim was an extension of workwear at the time and Cliff gets thrown off buildings, rides horses, and is a cowboy stuntman. So going with denim was definitely the move for him. The Canadian tuxedo look is finalized with his belt buckle that is also worn in just about every other outfit of his, which is of this oval buckle that was actually made around 1965 and after for stuntmen. The buckle says Stuntmen's Association of Motion Pictures, and on feet he's wearing a pair of soft moccasin boots which are made by the brand Minnetonka, which you can actually still buy today. Cliff wears these moccasins for two reasons. One, because he understands where the culture is going, and two, 
because he doesn't really have anything to prove because of the nature of his work and his life experiences like being a war veteran. Now for Sharon Tate, Quentin and Ariane decided to go with a partly accurate depiction of what Sharon wore, but they also wanted to show her personality through her clothes. Sharon was very positive and bubbly and they wanted her wardrobe to reflect that as well. The first outfit we see her in was probably inspired by the multiple pictures of Sharon in her fur coat. For the movie, Sharon is in this fur trench style jacket that has these black leather trims and matching the trims are her black knee-high go-go boots. For her accessories, she's holding a leather and floral dog carrier bag that is also seen in this real life photo that this look was most likely inspired by. Also, I want to note that throughout the movie, Robbie can be seen wearing Sharon Tate's real jewelry that was lended to her by Sharon's sister, Deborah. For Rick's second outfit, we see him walking onto set to play another heavy in a show, and he is in this light brown leather suit jacket with a yellow mustard turtleneck underneath and a pair of brown straight leg pants with his cowboy boots, of course. Now, Rick is walking on set both outdated in fashion and the silver screen. Although, objectively, I think he looks very clean. For the time, he couldn't be any more of a pariah for what's new and hip. Personally, again, I think the outfit is objectively a good look, but I do like his previous outfit a bit more. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that crop jacket. Now for Cliff, this look is probably my favorite of his. He is wearing a white faded Champion Auto Parts logo tee, a company that still exists today. Another thing I wanted to add was Quentin likes to add these details. That are, from, that are based in reality and puts them into his movies. And with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, what he did was use actual companies that were operating during the late 60s and early 70s and incorporated them into the garments, like the Champions tee. Now, with that Champions tee, he pairs it with a Hawaiian-style button-up shirt in this banana yellow colorway. And the reason why I say Hawaiian styled is because the shirt was actually custom made. Phillips scoured the internet and stores for vintage Hawaiian shirts, but had no luck finding what she wanted. So instead she decided to make a revered collared shirt with this Asian motif fabric. So technically it's more of a Asian than Hawaiian print shirt. The graphic print is so beautiful and it feels very vintage, but relevant at the same time. And this is of course paired with his vintage Levi's and moccasin boots. Again. Now for Sharon, they wanted to match this python trench coat, which was a custom piece she had worn in 1968 for the premiere of Rosemary's Baby, but they made some adjustments to the garment and gave the color a little bit more of a warmer tone. Underneath the coat, she has yellow hot pants and a long pointed collar crop top combo, and it is finished off with these black knee high go-go boots on feet. You can see here what I was saying before, Sharon's depicted as being very positive and sweet in both her mannerisms and by the yellow outfit and the warmer color of the jacket. Now, I really love the style of the python coat. I love that long jacket, and especially with that python snakeskin print. Now, because there were Western shows being filmed within the movie, there was a great depiction of Western wardrobe, whether it be Rick's old show, Bounty Law, or the new show he was guest starring on, Lancer. I especially like James Stacy's outfit, who is played by Timothy Oliphant. Personally, I've been looking for a shawl collar jacket for a while now, and although his is made of leather and a little bit too cropped for me, it looks amazing paired with the red ruffle shirt and the brown leather pants. Besides James Stacy, there were a ton of amazing Western outfits throughout the film with a bunch of fun fabrics, cuts, and colors. I've definitely been influenced by Western wear as of recent, and I'm definitely looking back on these outfits to get some inspiration. Now for Rick, he's in a dark brown fringe suede jacket that has a detailed Western yoke and cuffs. Quentin didn't want tie-dye or fringe to be in the movie, even though it would have been accurate for the late 60s. And I feel like this is because he didn't want to make the movie feel like tacky or cheesy. And I feel like those style details would definitely make it that way. But for Rick, they wanted him to be the only exception, probably due to the fact that he hates hippies and constantly says it throughout the film. Underneath the jacket, he has a grayish green corduroy pullover lace-up shirt, which is accurate for the time period that this movie is supposed to be filmed in. And on bottom, he has a pair of dark gray or black boot cut jeans. The outfit's finished off with a pair of these beautiful suede cowboy boots and for accessories, a brown and tan bandana neckerchief, and of course, a cowboy hat in black with some sort of printed band on it. Now, while Rick is filming the show, Cliff is working on his house, and at one point he has a flashback from a couple years ago, and in it we can see him wearing a 
Yellow Lion's Dragship Raceway t-shirt, which existed during 1955 to 1972. So again, period perfect. And of course, on bottom, he's wearing his vintage Levi's and moccasins yet again. Now for Sharon's third outfit, we see her with a striped fitted tee in yellow, red, and white, all warm tones, perfectly matching her appearance and personality. And on bottom, she's wearing a pair of denim hot pants. Now, Quentin has talked before about liking the combination of black and white before, and combine that with real life photos of Sharon and you get this next look. Sharon's wearing a black turtleneck long sleeve with a white mini skirt and a pair of white go-go boots. I thought this outfit was very sleek and something that could be worn today, but still maintained a late 60s, early 70s essence. So the next time we see Rick, he's a new man after allowing change into his life. Here we see him come back from a stint in Italy where he filmed four movies, and finally after allowing himself to change as an actor, he's now changed the way he presents himself. Rick's in a black striped long pointed collar button up with a black zip up jacket that hits just about his hips. And again, we can see another long pointed collar on that. Very late 60s, early 70s with the, the long pointed collars. His black pants are in a straight leg, possibly slight flared fit, matched with a pair of black leather plain toe boots. Let's not forget, he's also thrown a multicolored paisley print neckerchief touch that gives the outfit a bit of some color. Now the old rig would never have been caught dead in this outfit, but thankfully he's changed his ways and attitude. For Cliff, we have him wearing a white on white outfit with his denim jacket and his slightly flared jeans. Underneath his jacket is a fitted black t-shirt to show off the muscles and for easy movement when killing hippies. It looks like he swapped out his brown leather belt for a snakeskin one and his moccasin boots for what appears to be either a pair of cowboy boots or engineer boots with a strap securing the top of his foot. This is an evolution for Cliff. Is it because he's a bit more fashionable right now and has been listening and following some trends or is it the fact that Cliff is not the stuntman for Rick anymore so he feels like he has to put on for outsiders. In my opinion, it's probably the latter. Now Sharon can be seen here in this burnt yellow dress with a green and orange floral print. It looks both accurate and in shape and color, very beautiful on her. So this is the last outfit we see Rick in and it reaffirms the changes in his life. Rick's wearing a light blue rib knit polo that is printed or embroidered with pastel colors like these greens and pinks and he's paired that with some pink flared pants. Again, showing that he's changed as an actor and as a man. For Cliff, he ends up wearing the same outfit as the previous one we talked about before. And lastly, for Sharon, she's about eight and a half months pregnant. In the last scene, we get a good look at her and she could be seen wearing this, this yellow and white lace striped dress that has a dainty floral print for the lace. And it was definitely inspired by this photo of Sharon in a yellow and white striped dress with this butterfly screen print on it. Now that is all for the main characters, but obviously there were so many other outfits that I couldn't just not go over. So I'm gonna briefly go over them. For supporting actors, we had Steve McQueen with his black leather jacket over his black turtleneck paired with some sl white slim Levi jeans and then finished off with some black leather boots. Plus that scene where Rick tries out for Steve McQueen's role in The Great Escape, which was a grayish blue crew neck sweatshirt underneath his leather A2 flight jacket, a pair of beige cotton pants, and a pair of what appears to be brown M43 rough out boots. You also have Tex from the Manson family with his vintage Lee Western button up over a graphic t-shirt paired with some western fit pants in a brown colorway and then finish that off with a pair of black cowboy boots and of course a black cowboy hat. The rest of the Manson family didn't wear tie-dye because like I said before, Quentin didn't want to add that into the film. They still gave off a hippie vibe with their bright colors, quilted and embroidered fabrics, and the denim and patchwork pants. Now there were a couple bomber jackets and Harrington jackets in this film that looked great, whether it be on James Stacy, Rick Dalton, or Randy Lloyd. And finally, once again, I have to mention the depiction of Western was executed so well and it was very refreshing to see. There were so many characters with great outfits like Luke Perry. My favorite part of the Western scenes were the jackets of all the actors and the color palette. It was all great. Quentin's a huge fan of Western film, so I am not surprised that he executed this so well. When I go to a Tarantino film, I always know that I'm gonna get amazed by the visuals, the cinematography, and the storytelling, both through the script and especially through the costume design. I think Quentin and Arianne did a phenomenal job with creating a narrative 
by showing the evolution of Rick Dalton as an actor as well as the personality of the late Sharon Tate through the wardrobe, while at the same time still making a wonderfully styled movie. Well, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please let me know what your favorite outfit was. Like this video, subscribe, tell a random stranger on the internet or in real life about the channel. This was not as much of a heavy hitter as No, but it still was pretty beefy. I, have, I had to re-record some things and I wanted this to be done right, so it took a little time for me to get this one out. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Please follow me on my social media. It's all linked down below. And follow my Substack, where I write fashion and costume design related posts. Please let me know what video you want me to do next. Costume design, menswear fashion, custom clothing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace.